Our universe is not locally real. This statement is what won those three gentlemen this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. But what exactly does it mean? Let's take a closer look. As with almost every single question in modern physics, to fully understand this question, we must first look back to Albert Einstein. In his age, the philosophy behind science was very staunchly deterministic. That is, most scientists at that time believed that all events are determined completely by existing causes, governed by unchangeable laws of physics. Einstein himself supported this view. He thought that if you can describe a system and calculate the maths behind every object in a system, you can, with absolute confidence, find the outcome and behavior of any system in existence. This effectively means that given enough data about a system, you could simply know everything there is to know about anything, really. An electron can only be present at one point in space after being pushed to that point by force. Plain and simple. At the very same time, however, in Germany, certain Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr were moving towards a very different conclusion. They performed perhaps hundreds of experiments of different kinds. The quantum theory was born out of their brains. Those who supported this quantum theory argued that at the smallest of all scales, the quantum scales, events occurred not from determined properties by cause and effect relations, but by pure mathematical probabilities. Nothing, essentially, is real about the quantum world. In contradiction to our previous classical example, where an electron is definitely in one point in space and time, even if nothing is observing it, the quantum theories proposed that an electron only has a probability, a chance of being in one point of space out of multiple, before it is observed. In this pre-observation state, the electron is, strangely enough, at all possible points at the same time. This confusing phenomenon is called quantum superposition, and it was proposed by Erwin Schrödinger. Upon getting observed, the probability wave function collapses and the electron chooses to be positioned into a single point. The electron becomes real only when it needs to be real. Kind of like in those old PS1 games, where the rendering only appears where it is looked at. This sparked Einstein's staunch resistance campaign, and a decades-long war ensued in physics. He famously, in a letter to Bohr, remarked that God simply doesn't play dice. But with each day, it's starting to appear like God just might be. Most importantly, the central point of all this debate nowadays is quantum entanglement, or what Einstein sarcastically called spooky action at a distance. To do this briefly, electrons have a property called spin. Before being observed, electrons are in a superposition with regards to their spin. That is, they have all possible spins at the same time. In quantumly entangled electrons, no matter the distance between them, the observation and the subsequent collapse of the superposition of the spin of one electron to a defined spin leads to the second electron taking the exact opposite spin. Information, somehow, appears to travel faster than light, even instantly. This, of course, is completely absurd, right? There has to be some hidden variable in those processes, something we don't yet understand. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle especially, which tells us that we cannot both know the position and the velocity of a particle. This has to be a limit forced on us by our knowledge, and not by the universe itself. Well, luckily for us, Bell's theorem was designed to deal with these exact issues, and for 80 years, experiments were conducted, one after another, to try and lure out those hidden variables. Of course, we're talking about science, so those backs and forths continued on for almost a century, as everyone had a critique to offer as to why the experiment is actually very wrong. Until nowadays, probably once and for all, by those three gentlemen, it was proven that God, indeed, 
does play dice. Locally, at least, at the quantum scale. Our universe is not real. Things and properties do not exist until they need to exist. We live in a completely non-deterministic universe.